Okay, I got one last problem that I want to talk about. And this problem talks about getting tested for HIV. And there was a test that they once had for HIV. It was called the ELISA test. And this is how a, a test kind of works. So, so let's say we have the ELISA test is used to screen donated blood for the presence of HIV antibodies, okay? So if they find the antibodies in your bloodstream, then it's telling them that, oh, if the antibodies are there, you have HIV, okay? So when the HIV antibodies are present in the blood test, it also gives a positive result 98% of the time, okay? That's important information. And when HIV antibodies are not present in the blood test, also actually still can give you a positive result, and it happens 7% of the time. Not as often, but it still could happen, right? Which is called a false positive, okay? That's key right there. Well, we don't have to highlight that. So the question is, suppose that if only one out of every 1,000 units of donated blood actually contain HIV, what is the problem that a positive ELISA result is actually a, not a false positive, it's actually a true result? We want to find the probability of this. Is it good probability? Is it a bad probability? If, if you get tested and they say you're positive, do you really have it, or is there really a small chance of you still having it? So let's see if we can find that out. And to do that, we're going to use this little tree down here. I got some things hiding from you. I'm going to rehide them, and then I'll bring them out as we go. I don't know why they were unhidden. So um, here we start off at this point with a unit of blood. And when you have a unit of blood, it's either going to have antibodies in it or no antibodies in it. And the problem with having antibodies is very small, right? It said one out of every thousand have antibodies right here. So the chance of it having antibodies is 0.001 if you change that to a decimal. And the chance of it not having antibodies is 1 minus that, which would be 0.999. Okay, so that's the probability of not having antibodies in there or chance of it. Now let's focus on the ones that have antibodies, right? So if there are antibodies in there or saying that you actually have HIV or it sees it, um, then the chance that the the test is positive, or will give you a positive, would be 0.98 if it's positive. And thus, 1 minus that, it would be a 0 0.02 chance that it would come out negative. So even if you have antibodies, it could still say you don't have it, right? Now, if there are no antibodies, the LISA test will say that you might have it 0.07% of the time, okay? But there's 93% chance that if you don't have it, it will say you're clear, you don't have it, okay? Now, we want to figure out the probability if you have antibodies and it gives you positive, what's the chance of that happening? And that's the probability of B and A. And just to figure that out, you just take this and you multiply it by that to get to the end result. So if we were to multiply these out, and you can fill these in in your table, you would get 0 0.098 for the chance of you having antibodies and it give you a positive, 0 0.00098. For the chance of you having antibodies and it being negative, the chance of that is 0 0.00002. If you don't have antibodies but it gives you a positive, the chance of that having is 0 0.06993. And lastly, if you don't have antibodies and it gives you a negative, the chance of that having is, that's the highest, 0.92907. Okay? Now remember, the question that we had up here is, I'm going to re-highlight that. Let's do it in purple. What is the probability that a positive ELSA result is accurate? We want to know what's the probability of that happening. So we need to just focus on the positives. Given it's positive, right? Given that it's positive, this one said it was positive, and this one said it was positive. What's the probability that it's accurate? Well, so what we need to do is we're going to take these two positives. This is like our focus. Our, we add these two together. So given that it's positive, we'll put that down here. So we got 0 0.06993 plus 0 0.00098. What's the probability that it's actually HIV? Well, that would just be this. This, this has antibodies right here, and it gives you a positive. The probability of that happening is 0 0.00098, so 0 0.00098. So given is positive, what's the probability? This is what we have to put in our graphing or in our calculator. So let's just put that in there to figure out the chance of this happening. So we got 0 0.00098 divided by, and we're going to put this bottom part in parentheses, 0 0.06993 plus 0 0.00098. 
close those parentheses off and see what we get. So, well, that's small. Okay. So this is actually equal to 0 0.013, which is actually 1.3%. Okay. So what this is telling us is if this actually is positive, there's only a 1.3% chance that you really actually do have HIV. So if someone were to give you this test and says, yes, you do have HIV, I'm sorry, you should say, well, retest me 10 more times because I want to make sure. Because there's really only 1.3% chance that it's accurate right there. That's what it's telling you. And that's how you solve a problem like this.